Hello, I'm Tom Wilkinson, and welcome to the Thinking in English podcast, a podcast for intermediate to advanced level English learners. After 300 main episodes of Thinking in English, it is finally time to talk about the problem of thinking in different languages, including English. We'll discuss the definition of thinking, talk about whether you need language to think, consider whether thinking in English or any language is possible for people without a voice in their head, and end with a discussion on how you can start thinking in English and whether you actually should. This has been one of the most requested topics of all time, so I hope you enjoy listening. You can find the full transcript for free over on my website, thinkinginenglish.blog, or on Spotify. Here is today's vocabulary list. Conscious. Conscious. Aware of and responding to one's surroundings or awake. For example, she was conscious of the people staring at her as she walked into the room. Neuroscientist. Neuroscientist. A scientist who studies the brain and nervous system. As in, the neuroscientist conducted an experiment to understand how the brain processes language. Stroke. Stroke. A medical condition in which poor blood flow to the brain results in cell death. As in, after his stroke, he had to undergo months of rehabilitation to regain his speech and mobility. Visualize. Visualize. Form a mental image of something or imagine. As in, she tried to visualize her future success as she worked on her business plan. Inner monologue. Inner monologue. The internal dialogue one has with oneself in one's mind, or the voice in your head. As in, his inner monologue was filled with doubts and questions as he prepared for the big presentation. Polyglot. Polyglot. A person who knows and is able to use several languages. For example, being a polyglot she easily conversed with the international guests at the conference. This is the 300th episode of Thinking in English. Kind of. There are actually over 370 episodes uploaded publicly from my account, plus nearly 100 bonus episodes uploaded to Patreon for my supporters. Despite this, I like to think of this episode as the 300th main episode of the show. I started thinking in English back in September 2020, nearly four years ago. Over the course of these 300 episodes, I have covered an incredibly wide range of topics, from space travel to the future of coffee, from tips on how to argue in English to Chile's controversial constitution, from the problems of over-tourism to the debate around student loans. There is one topic, however, that I have not covered yet, a surprising topic, and one that people often ask me about that I have never discussed. How to think in English. That's right, the Thinking in English podcast has never talked about the process or methodology behind thinking in English. Why? Well, there are a few reasons why I haven't discussed this topic before. First, the show title Thinking in English is more about thinking about various and interesting topics that are presented in the English language. Second, this topic is incredibly oversaturated. Every single podcast, YouTube channel or blog for English learners seems to have an article titled something like 
how to think in English. Just search the phrase on Google. You will find hundreds of articles on this topic. The advice they give is usually very basic and generic, which is fine, but it makes it difficult to be unique. I try to be a little more unique and scientific in my approach to the topics I cover on Thinking in English, and I don't want to make an episode that is just repeating what other people have already said. But I do want to make an episode about thinking in foreign languages, so for you guys, Thinking in English. So in this episode of Thinking in English, I'm going to explore what it means to think, the relationship between language and thoughts, how multilingual people think, and finally, whether you should actually try to think in English. Let's start with a highly complicated question. What is thinking? Or what is a thought? I'm sure I have philosophy students, psychologists, therapists, doctors and neuroscientists who listen to this podcast and who all have a much deeper understanding of thinking and what it means to think than I do. In fact, there is no one simple or universal definition of thinking. It is a complex process in which we use our minds to consider analyse, evaluate and generate ideas, beliefs and perceptions about the world around us. It involves mental activities such as reasoning, problem solving, decision making, imagining and remembering. Thinking can be conscious or unconscious. Some of our common actions are done without the realisation that we are thinking. Instant replies to questions or natural reactions to situations. When we blink our eyes, breathe, walk and run, we are thinking but we don't always know we're thinking. Other things can take a great deal of mental effort. Writing a podcast episode, for example, often requires me sitting and thinking about possibilities for hours, sometimes even days. I experiment inside my brain, think of different ideas and questions and try to estimate or guess how you guys will respond to a topic. Thinking can also occur in various forms, including logical, creative, critical and abstract thinking. Commonly, philosophers have divided thinking into problem-solving thinking and reasoning thinking. But each of these involve various different processes of thinking. So this episode is titled How to Think in English and my podcast is Thinking in English which suggests that we think in a language. I think in English, my native language, and you guys think in your native languages most of the time. But do we need language to think? Do you always think in a language when thinking? This was one of the main problems that philosophers tried to tackle in the past. Ludwig Wittgenstein, for example, famously wrote that the limits of my language mean the limits of my world. Bertrand Russell similarly believed that language's purpose is to make possible thought which could not exist without it. Does this mean we can't think at all without languages? No. Neuroscientists have conducted experiments that demonstrate language is processed in a separate part of the brain to actions like planning, remembering, making moral decisions or thinking about the future. Experiments have been conducted on patients who experienced traumatic brain injuries or strokes and lost all ability to use language. The results show that people without the ability to use or process languages can still solve mathematic problems and can still perform complex reasoning tasks. One of the most famous examples in history is 
comes from the respected Soviet music composer Vissarion Shebalin. Shebalin suffered two strokes in the 1950s, which left him severely aphasic. In other words, his strokes damaged the language part of his brain and destroyed his ability to use and process languages. Without language, many of us would question how we could still think or be creative. Shebalin, however, completed his fifth full symphony without any language capabilities, and it was described as a brilliant piece of music. There are other reports of people losing the ability to use or process languages, but still be able to play chess or other strategic games. Of course, language is very useful for thinking. In the case of Shebalin, the composer, he became a brilliant composer while he could use language and was able to maintain that when he lost his ability to use languages. In my research for this episode, one of the best explanations I found came from an article published by MIT's McGovern Institute. They wrote, while the language system may not be directly involved in the process of thinking, it is crucial for acquiring enough information to properly set up various cognitive domains. In other words, while we might not need a language to think, languages are very useful in learning how to think. A person who loses their language as an adult due to a brain injury might still be able to count and solve math problems, but probably because they learned how to do this as a child with languages. Language is so closely tied to thinking for many of us that we can't imagine thinking without a language. But the reality is that we can think without language, just in a different way. At the beginning of the episode, I mentioned that there are hundreds, probably thousands of articles published online trying to give you tips on how to think in English. They say learning to think in a foreign language will make you a more fluent and better English speaker. This is not necessarily wrong, but I think it's a little simplistic and misleading. As I've tried to show, thinking is a complex process and is not necessarily always tied with language. You don't need to think in English to be a great English speaker. In fact, you don't even need to think in any language to speak a foreign language. One of the great mysteries of the mind in current science and psychology is people without an internal monologue or people with an unusual inner monologue. An inner monologue is an inner voice where you hear yourself talking in your head. As I am planning Thinking in English episodes, I am constantly hearing my own voice, generating ideas, or considering what words to write down. There is language, and that language is English, clear and present while I am thinking. In fact, I can also think in Japanese. When I'm engaging in a Japanese conversation, watching a Japanese movie, or just trying to think about something in Japanese, the voice in my head switches to use Japanese language. I actually find it really difficult to speak Japanese while thinking in English, because of my inner monologue. Many of you listening will understand what I mean about an inner monologue, but not everyone will. And this is because not everyone has an inner monologue. There are people who don't hear their own voice in their head while thinking. There are people who hear no language in their head at all. There are people who hear different voices. And there are a wide variety of different ways to think. I found an interesting Guardian article which interviewed a variety of people without normal internal monologues. There was a man who described his brain as like a tiny island surrounded by an infinite ocean. 
He had no voice at all in his head. He never criticised himself, never shamed himself, never talked himself through situations. He said he could spend an hour without a single conscious thought in his brain. Other people reported seeing rather than hearing thoughts. If they need to buy milk, they see an image of buying milk instead of hearing the words buy milk. Others talked about feeling rather than hearing things. No one knows why some people have inner voices and others have nothing in their brain. Deaf people, for example, can't hear sound, so sometimes visualise their inner voices rather than hearing them. The reality is that many of you listening will not have typical inner monologues. Or in fact, there might not even be a typical inner monologue. So when we talk about thinking in English or thinking in any language, it just might not make sense for some of you. If you are a native Polish speaker, but you don't actually hear Polish language in your head when thinking, then it's unrealistic to expect you to actively think in English because you don't do this in your own language. For most people, including bilinguals, it's not as simple as changing your entire brain into another language when you're thinking. Your brain and its ability to speak in different languages can be developed through constant practice and exposure. I speak Japanese. Do I always think in Japanese while speaking? No, of course not. There are definitely times, in most conversations, when I have to think in English to find a meaning or structure in the depths of my brain. But the more I study, speak and practice, the less I need to do this. I'm not constantly translating in my brain when I speak. Japanese and English are such different languages with completely different grammars and sentence structures that direct translation seems difficult when I'm thinking. As we get better at languages, we need to translate less words and less phrases. Often I hear something now and I instantly recognise the meaning and instantly know how to respond without really needing to think at all. In fact, this is probably how you speak in your native language. We have an entire phrase in English, think before you speak, because it's so common for people to instantly react and say something without thinking at all. To speak in English, you don't actually need to think consciously at all, or at least that is the level of fluency most of you guys are striving to reach. As you get better at English, more comfortable and more confident in speaking, the better you will be at using English fluently without needing to think in your native language. Of course, you may want to think in English for other purposes. You may want to consider philosophical questions in English, or write a poem in English, or plan a presentation in English all of which require thinking, reasoning and preparation. I actually tried to plan this episode while thinking in Japanese, and it was really difficult. I just don't have the vocabulary or the cre creativity in Japanese to make a great episode, and I was getting confused with the constant switching of languages. But I could do it to some extent. And with more practice, I'm sure I could get better and eventually produce content in Japanese. So finally, I want to talk about whether you should actively try to think in English. Whether you should force yourself to use English as the medium of thought in your brain. You might think I've missed a section of this episode actually, how to think in English. I've purposefully not given a detailed answer to this question because I think it has already been mentioned in this episode. To give you a simple answer, 
improve your English ability, practice and get comfortable using the language. There are so many different ways to do this and nothing will work for every single person. I think speaking as often in English as possible is a great way to stop translating in your head. You could join a conversation club like the one I run to help if you need. The more comfortable you become in using English, the easier it will be to think in English. But should you actively try to force yourself to think in English? Should you concentrate all of your effort into changing your inner monologue into English? For some of you, the answer is simple. If you don't have an inner monologue, there is no way you can force yourself to think in English. For those of you who can force yourself to do this, like I can with Japanese, the answer is more complicated. I mentioned previously that I tried to think in Japanese, make my inner monologue speak in Japanese, to plan this episode. While I could do this, I found myself becoming frustrated. I couldn't quite grab the right ideas or clearly see the topics I wanted to talk about in the episode. Steve Kaufman, the well-known polyglot and YouTube language expert, made an interesting video on this topic. He mentioned that forcing yourself to think in a language and force yourself to stop thinking in your native language can introduce stress into the process of learning. It can make you uptight, less flexible, and like I was, frustrated. This is not the best situation or context for learning, communicating, or living. And his ending advice was great as well. You just need to relax and let yourself naturally start to think in English or whatever language you are learning. If you force yourself, you will get stressed. But if you don't worry about thinking in English, if you simply focus on learning language through the means you enjoy, you will naturally and gradually find yourself thinking more and more in English. So here is today's final thought. After nearly four years, I have now finally covered the topic of thinking in English on the Thinking in English podcast. I always try to be unique and different, so hopefully you have enjoyed this slightly different approach to the topic of thinking in foreign languages. I've looked at the process of thinking, the relationship between language and thinking, the fact some people don't think in a language at all, and finally talked about how, and if you should, think in English. The best advice I can give is that thinking in English should come naturally to you. The more you learn, study, practice and use English, the more confident and comfortable you become, and the more you will find yourself thinking in English. But what do you think? How would you describe your thoughts and your thinking process. Let me know by leaving a comment. I would like you to comment on Spotify. I'd like you to comment on the Thinking in English blog, on the transcript, um, or reach out to me on social media or Patreon or Discord. In fact, Patreon and Discord are probably the best places to contact me as I'm most likely to respond there. If you'd like to improve your English and you'd like to practice speaking more in English, I recommend joining our conversation clubs. Um, The link is always in the description of these podcasts. But become a Patreon member, join our conversation clubs, practice speaking more and more, and you'll find yourself gradually thinking in English. Thank you all for listening, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.